Hi, this is Brandon at the Tech Connect department at the New York Public Library. Today I'm going to discuss absolute and relative cell references and how you can use them to supercharge your Excel formulas. If you need a refresher on formulas and functions, see part one to this video. In Microsoft Excel, the copy and paste function can apply a formula multiple times across different sets of data. For example, here I have the formula sum B3 to B16. And this is adding together all the values I have in the B column. When I copy this formula by pressing Control C and then pasting it in the next column over by pressing Control V, we see a different number. In fact, the formula result is different, and the cell references in the formula have been automatically adjusted from B3 to B16 to C3 and C16. Cell references by default automatically adjust themselves when you copy and paste them in a different spot. This feature is called relative cell references. This can be used to apply formulas to multiple columns all at once. For example, I'm going to once again copy this first formula, and then rather than pasting it into a single cell, I'm going to select all the cells in this totals row and paste. Now my sum formula has been applied to every column in this data set. By default, cell references are relative and will automatically adjust themselves when you copy and paste them. However, if we don't want this to happen, if we want the cell reference to remain the same when we copy and paste it, we can add a dollar sign in front of both the column and the row reference. When we add a dollar sign to these cells, they become absolute cell references. Here's an example of when absolute cell references are useful. I have once again my data table with the bottom row listing the subtotal of each column. However, now I also have a tax percentage listed at the bottom. To calculate the tax amounts for each column, I'm going to multiply the subtotal by that tax percentage value. If I copy and paste that formula into the other cells in this row, I get a bunch of zeros. Clearly something is wrong. If I look inside of these formulas, we see that our original B17 value rightly moved over to the C column. However, our tax percentage value also moved over to the right, and we don't want that to happen. That's what's giving us those zeros. We need the tax percentage value to be written as an absolute cell reference. Therefore, I'm going to add dollar signs in front of the A and the 22. Now, when I copy and paste this formula, we will have correct values. The relative cell reference of the subtotal is moving along with each formula while the tax is remaining the same. Now all that's left is to write a simple addition formula adding the subtotal to the tax. That's enough to get started with bringing your formulas to the next level with absolute and relative cell references. If you want more practice in Excel, join us for a free online or in-person class at the New York Public Library. See the link in the description to find the right class for you.